Parrish is coming up next. I originally met him in Saudi Arabia back in February, so it's fantastic to be seeing him in Toronto. And who, who knows ne in next country we'll, we'll meet up. So Rish is a co-founder and CEO at Superworld. Previously co-founded Rogue Initiative Studios, partnered with Michael Bay, a Hollywood film, TV, gaming, and immersive entertainment studio. He's also the founder and managing partner of Peace Labs, an early stage VC fund based in Kiev. Previously a senior business developer and global evangelist at Topal, backed by Zeus and Horowitz, the Rockefellers, and co-founders of Facebook and Zynga. A venture capital investor at Spencer Trask Ventures and an investment banker, both at UBS Investment Bank, HSBC Securities, where he specialized in public finance, corporate finance, and M&A. Let's welcome Rish and his presentation, How Can We Leverage the Metaverse to Enhance People's Real Lives to Build a Better World? Thank you. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. I am very excited to be in Toronto. I really love the world. And so travel and getting to know the world is really important to me. And you know, there's so many technologies that have launched and that we're working with now and you know, with generative AI and all that's possible. You know, what I'm very excited about is enabling everyone to get to know the world around them, to participate in the world around them, to create in the world around them, to monetize the world around them and to own the world around them. And that's what we're gonna talk about is how can we use these technologies to enhance your real life? Each one of you, your real lives, how do you build livelihoods with these technologies? And then how collectively can we use this technology to improve and enhance humanity? That's our mission. Let's go to the slides. So I'm gonna be talking about a few things today. I'm gonna start off by talking about the trends that have occurred in this industry, in technology in general and society. Um, kind of go through those so you understand why the timing of all of this is really now. And then I'm gonna go into uh, more about uh, you know, what are different use cases that we've built and shown some of the eight ways that we're improving humanity and improving your ability to create ways to, to build a livelihood for yourself. Go over some examples of that, show you what that is. Um, and, and so th it's gonna be a very, uh, oh, oh, at the end of this presentation, I, I hope that you'd have a very strong understanding of why the timing's now you know, why the, the different inflection points and standards have created that, and then ultimately see examples of what's happening already. So over the last few years, we've seen that virtual worlds have thrived. You know, more people are on Zoom calls now than in ever before, right? And, and so we're really seeing that um, the opportunities to be more virtual are there. And whether you, enjoy being more virtual or not, we're all more virtual than we were before. And we see it, whether you're watching more Netflix or you're maybe playing more video games or you're on Zoom calls. And believe me, I actually love the real world. I love the physical world. So that just to, just to know my perspective on all this, I like being in the physical world. But there's a lot of us who sometimes prefer to be more virtual, right? And we've seen that in the stats. All of us are doing more virtual things. Now, if we all are more virtual, what has to happen is we gotta start thinking about who owns the virtual worlds we're spending time in. You, if you live in the physical world, you're probably thinking about whether you own a home or you rent a home, right? You're thinking about do you own a car or rent a car, because these are all physical world things, right? Well, previously, that was a problem in virtual environments, because everything digital can be copied, everything digital. You know, it's hard to really own it necessarily. Blockchains have solved all that, right? This is why this is a very big important inflection point. Blockchains now have allowed us to own the digital virtual worlds around us. They've enabled us to create economies in a virtual environment. That's why blockchains are essential 
for virtual world economies. The other inflection point that's happened in the last few years is the augmented reality market has grown rapidly. And you just saw, most of you I'm, I'm sure have seen Apple's uh, Vision Pro that, that got announced last week. And that's just the latest news. But companies over the last six, seven years, and even prior to that, have been really spending a lot of money on software and hardware in this space. And so we're seeing a lot of growth on the software side of what's possible, as well as the hardware side. Mobile devices and web AR. You don't need anything except the web to look at AR, right? Spatial computing is opening the doors to more content and more realistic experiences as well. Now any iPhone or Android phone or iPad, you name it, can do volumetric scanning, right? You can do use LiDAR, you can, you can you know, scan something and turn it into a 3D object, right? And so the, th the democratization of creating 3D content is here. It's just most of you may have not done it, but very soon, you'll be scanning things and sending them as a 3D object, right? That's already here. That's here for a few years. The other thing that's happened is mobile phones have just gotten faster. There's 5G now, right? You can download movies really fast. You can, you know, stream, you know? The, the thing that's happening, though, is now, since we're moving into these virtual environments, with 5G, you can do that all on your phone. You don't need a Wi-Fi. So now we're, we have the technology to be able, and that cellular connectivity, to be able to enjoy these experiences. And the beauty of augmented reality, there's many ways to access it, right? You have mobile phones, you have web AR, and you have AR glasses. And Apple Vision Pro is an example of that. But there's going to be lots of headsets out <laughs> in the next few years, right? So you're going to not. Some of you might not buy a computer again, a, a, desk, a laptop or a desktop. You might just wear a headset in the next three or four years. So what is the metaverse? I know we've, we've heard this term. We've, we've seen you know, examples of this. But I keep, I keep you know, hearing people not completely understand it. So I want to I wanna make sure after this presentation, you understand it. The metaverse is often called a, you know, the next generation of the internet, right? Um, you know, it's the next advanced kind of way that we're, we're communicating with each other, right, ultimately. But really, I, I think that's all still very nebulous. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And some people say, oh, it's spatial. That's why it's special, right? Or it's blockchain, Web3. But I think what the metaverse is, and the way you should understand the metaverse, is the metaverse brings together your physical life and your virtual life. So if we all went on a run right now, right, we went running for a jog or something, we would consider that a physical activity, right? We're in the, fi we're in the physical world right now, right? If you're on Netflix or you're on a Zoom call, that's a digital activity. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, that's digital, right? The metaverse brings these two things together. So when you're doing things in the physical world, you're, you're looking for this virtual or digital feedback or benefit from that. Or if you're doing things that are digital or virtual, you're looking for physical feedback from that. That's what the metaverse is. It's the metaverse is this idea that your physical life and your virtual life have come together, right? So if you're going on a run and you don't have a whoop band on, <laughs> or you're not monitoring your steps, that's a physical run. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you have a, if you're watching your steps, you're in the metaverse. You're, you're now bringing your physical life and your digital life together. That's what the metaverse is. If you're, if you're, you know, doing something online, you're buying an NFT online, or buying a ticket to something, and that's allowing you to do something in the physical world, yeah, you're bringing your virtual life into your physical life, right? And you could say that if that, if that digital item was an NFT, then it would be more metaverse, <laughs> right? But it's really your physical and virtual world coming together. That's what the metaverse is about. And that's what's exciting about it. Because before this, we always thought it was separate, right? And so that, that's, that's, that's the future. And AR is going to be the gateway 
to the metaverse. And why is AR going to be the gateway to the metaverse? It's because augmented reality is all around us. That's what AR is, just for everyone who needs a definition on that. So AR, augmented reality is you're, you're in the real world and you're able to access or view content around you. You're not totally in a synthetic environment. You can be, to be honest. If you're talking about the real world, you could put some VR content right here, and that could still be AR, so it's kind of a tricky definition. But AR is you know, what's around us, and that's why it's going to be the gateway, is because that has to do with your real life, right? I don't play video games, and, and the reason I don't is because I like the real world. I don't want to go totally to a virtual world, right? But if I could add, add content and information to my real world about things I was interested in, maybe things I should see in Toronto, I would pull out my phone and look at that, right? Because I, I actually like that. I can learn things about my environment, but still be in the real world. So AR is what enables all this. Let me go through a quick definition on non-fungible tokens so you understand what those are. If maybe there's people in the audience who still is trying to understand, what's the big deal? NFTs? Like, what was that? Was that some fad or something? Like, why, why was everyone into that, right? Now you'll understand after this presentation what the whole thing about NFTs is. Okay, so what's fungibility? Fungibility is when one thing equals another. So if I have one Bitcoin and you have one Bitcoin and we sell our Bitcoins, we get the same amount of money, right? They're both equal. If you have one US dollar and you have one US dollar and you want to convert that to another currency, you're going to get the same exact currency. They're both equal. That's what fungibility means. One equals the other, right? Non-fungibility is when you have one item and you have another item and they're not equal. They're unique. Each one is unique, right? Now, the important thing to understand, why is NFT so important? It's because life is non-fungible. What does that mean? That means if you look around the room here, everything you see is non-fungible. Literally, everything. Everything is unique. Even all the chairs, if I actually wanted to sell each one of these chairs, Someone would say, oh, that one has a scratch on it, this one looks new, this one's broken, right? Each one is different, right? And that's why non-fungibility is so important. Because what if you could tag everything around us with a certificate or a digital certificate? And that's what an NFT is, right? It's the ability to use technology to identify uniqueness and authenticity in anything. So if I have an NFT for a specific item, that stands for that item, right? So that's what it is. Whether it's, you know, you're talking about items in your home, you're talking about photos and memories, you're talking about collectibles. And so a lot of times we think of NFTs as digital, right? Like digital art, things like that. But NFTs can be anything. You could create a service, you know, service business where you do some consulting and you could sell you know, tickets to one hour of your consulting as, your, as an NFT. So you realize all it means is you're providing a way to people to have authenticity. And to be honest, you can even do it if, if all the items are the same, and you could do like a batch. So there's a lot, a lot of flexibility in terms of NFTs. You can say these items are actually all the same. I've just numbered them from one to 10, but they're all the same. There's only 10 of them, right? Or you could say each one is totally unique. There's a lot of flexibility. That's why the, the technology of NFTs is powerful. So look into it. If you haven't looked into it yet, use it for your business. So what is the metaverse? And what is the future of the metaverse? I think you all understand what the metaverse is now. Bring your physical and your virtual life together. What is the future of the metaverse? DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. It's your ability to get together with people and start to create a mission, to be able to organize yourself digitally around certain goals and create rule systems to do that. It's kind of like an LLC, you're starting a company, but it's a lot more fluid. It's a lot more frictionless. It's a lot more global, right? Um, you know, it, it, can, it doesn't have to have jurisdictions necessarily. I mean, there's some of the laws are still being worked out around that, but the idea is that DAOs allow you to have this kind of digital, you know, uh, organization. Um, and, and, and they're going to be very important. These are very powerful. 
DeFi, decentralized finance. All of us will start using more and more decentralized finance over the years. You, it, it's, it, it allows you to have less cost, less friction. The global economy is going to be run on DeFi. And we've seen what's happened with centralized finance over the last couple of years, even the last year, with the banking crisis and other things that have gone on recently. And you know, I think DeFi is going to help solve some of these problems, add more transparency to the system. Number three is real world utility. So real world utility is all about how can we, again, provide value to people in the real world using these technologies. So the metaverse is gonna move to your real life. That's what's coming. Now I'm gonna go through the next part and kind of just show you things about what we're building at Superworld so you can see real life use cases for all the things I'm talking about. So what is Superworld? Superworld is a virtual world built on top of the real world. There's two things you need to know. One, we, you can create anything anywhere. I can create anything anywhere. I can monetize anything anywhere, and I can discover anything from anywhere. So if I come to Toronto or Los Angeles or Tokyo or you know, Madrid, anywhere in the world, you could say, Rish, check out my world. And I could walk around, and you've left me things. You've left a hologram of yourself somewhere, taking me on a tour of your favorite neighborhood. You've left photos and videos in different places. You've left content in different places that I can click on and go to a website or click on and collect something. So you personalize your world with everything you want. And then we've divided the surface of the Earth into 64 billion properties. Point zero one, point zero one, longitude, latitude. So you can buy any place on Earth. And if you own those places, you benefit from monetization that happens there. Advertising, e-commerce, digital commerce, data, gaming, analytics, DeFi. And so again, you can own any place in the world, the 64 billion plots. Now I'm gonna show you some things. So this is an example of buying a virtual property in Superworld, right? So you probably heard about virtual real estate. So this is an example of that. You can buy places in real world locations. You could buy downtown Toronto. Each plot's about $65. This shows you what that looks like, right? So a variety of different platforms, but in Superworld, you're buying real world locations, right? So this is Monaco Harbor and the country of Monaco. Um, all the blue spots are places that have been bought up. You can create NFTs, right? And so again, you can create NFTs out of anything for your business, things that we, you want to do in your real life, uh, you know, things you want to do as a community. You can create, discover, and place NFTs in real world locations. So to give you an example of how do you place NFTs. So that, that was just showing you that you can create content and place content in real world locations on Earth, right? Back to bringing your physical life and your virtual life together. You can create content people can click on and go buy your physical goods or your physical services. Or you could you know, create content that's totally digital and place it there. And that, that content could unlock things in the real world. This is an example of just content placed in different places on Earth. You know, people are meeting in places, creating content, meeting together and doing things. People are placing content and selling it in real world locations. Um, last week, we partnered with Sports Illustrated, and I'm gonna show you, this is, this is really, this is mine's, it's mind blowing for me how this works, just to tell you about it. But Sports Illustrated's a big brand, and they, they've put a lot of sports, about 250, thousand sports events around the world.
So how does that work? It means if I come to Superworld and I buy tickets to the Blue Jays game, but he owns the virtual real estate where the Blue Jays play their stadium, he earns money every time someone buys tickets to a real Blue Jays game. Do you understand? So I'm going to something in the real world, but he owns the area in Superworld that's monetizing, which is the, which is the stadium. But if I go to the game and I put content in that stadium because I'm a fan of the Blue Jays, he makes money from that too. And if I'm a not a fan of the Blue Jays and I put, a, I put content from the opposing team, he makes money too. So if you own that real estate, you own money, you, own, you benefit from anything that happens in that real world location, live events and virtual events. So that's really interesting. This is an example of Art Basel. It's a big art festival in Miami. These artists that you're seeing there, they weren't, they weren't signed up for Miami Art Week, Art Basel. They put their art in the convention center without being there. So you, can, you could say, hey, I'm going to put this in a stadium, or I'm going to put my art in the Louvre. And you can tell all your friends, and they can come there, they can look next to the Mona Lisa, and your art's there on the wall. But it's in your world. There's an infinite number of filters on the world, right? Just to be clear, all right? So this is an example. This is a, a yacht, a 3D yacht that was pulled into Monaco Harbor. Someone bought the yacht, got a VIP ticket to the show. These are examples of artwork. So there's a concert. So the point is you can create anything anywhere in the real world, right? Someone was selling his artwork in Times Square. So you just put it up in Times Square, <laughs> send it to all his friends, and it sold. You know, it's pretty easy. Uh, we had a we had an artist come to us who wanted to create a temple, and he had a lot of artwork, and he wanted to create a temple, and so he created a temple in Egypt, in the pyramids, and so you can go into Superworld and see this at the pyramids, or you can go to the pyramids and pull out your phone and walk through his temple, and it's it's there, and it has artwork on the walls, and you can walk through it. But the point is in showing you this is you can build anything you want doesn't have to just be an object. It could be a whole temple, and this is examples of his artwork there. So this is, an exam this is a video of the, the experience of the temple. It's called the Luxor Temple. He's a very famous digital artist. In the Amazon jungle, we had tribes create digital art in the Amazon. I didn't know, I didn't know tribes in the Amazon jungle had smartphones. Yeah, I was surprised myself. They, they created an art work in the Amazon to teach people about deforestation in the Amazon jungle that you can view from anywhere in the world. And so, again, this isn't just, you know, only for people that are creating super yachts. <laughs> you know, you can really create anything you want. Barbados announced they're building an embassy in Superworld. Yeah, th that blows my mind, too. Um, governments are moving in to these, these areas. And again, since we are in the real world, it allows you to bring your physical and virtual, maybe get a passport, maybe get a, a visa. There's agencies like Metaverse Group, which is actually in Toronto, um, that are very involved in, 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 in Superworld and other virtual worlds. But agencies are seeing this as an opportunity to own virtual real estate and to create content. The business models are immense. And you've heard in the previous presentations, Second Life, which got started you know, 20 years ago, still makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So the opportunity is huge. We're solving SDG goals, improving the world. That's the mission here, and that's the opportunity in the metaverse. Uh, we're, we're lucky, we've been fortunate, we've you know, gotten a lot of press and people know about what, what's being built here in the metaverse, but the opportunity to use these technologies to improve people's lives and improve the world is here. So I want to thank you all for the opportunity. Hopefully that explained to you some of the concepts of the metaverse and what we're doing here to make a difference for people's lives. Thank you.